Hi, I'm Chris. I am a, going to be a sophomore at the Dalton School. I have built a 4x4x4 LED cube controlled by an Arduino Mega. And I've been trying to make it a, a platform that anyone could use. I've built a joystick and two push buttons that can allow it to uh, be versatile, make your own games on it, and animations and all that. The way I designed the circuit allows for um, each LED to be individually addressed by the Arduino and the programming. So it's sort of a grid system because it is, in fact, a 3D array or a matrix. So each anode column, they're all connected together, all of the anodes in this column. Um, and there are cathode rows that make layers. So all the cathodes are connected in a row, and that, that leads into the other cathodes. Um, thus making a layer. And in order to have the code address a, a certain LED, you would specify what anode uh, pin, because each of the wires is going to a pin, uh, which anode column you want to be set to high, set on, and which cathode layer you also want on. And the cathode layer, each cathode then goes to a transistor. And if you apply uh, each transistor also goes to an Arduino pin. So the Arduino can then control whether the transistors are open, essentially. Sort of, I'm only using it like a switch. So basically these transistors then divert the cathode layers to ground. So if it's not grounded, you won't see that layer lit. Um, if it is grounded, uh, then it is. <laughs> um, this system works using persistence of vision as well. So right now there's a, an animation of a ball, but in fact not all of these LEDs are lit at the same time. It is in fact um, switching through the layers. So it lights up this one and turns it off, then it lights up the next one and turns it off, et cetera, et cetera, it goes through it. Um, I also have two push buttons and a thumb joystick that I think is from a PS2 controller that I bought from SparkFun. Um, these go to pins on the Arduino and allow for input so you could develop your own games for this system. And I tried to make it very versatile because it's really just a display. You could kind of do anything you want with it. This circuit relies on a phenomenon called uh, persistence of vision. Uh, I didn't want my circuit to have to run wires from each of the 64 LEDs so it's scrolling through each of the layers and lighting up whatever needs to be on. And I'm going to, it's going to slow down the rate at which it's scrolling. So now you can see that it's lighting up one layer at a time and scrolling upwards. The human eye cannot register the frame rate that it was at previously, which was only a delay of one millisecond. Uh, I wrote a couple if statements that made it so it's just going to slow down. So it's just increasing the uh, delay time between each layer. So this is what it is actually doing, but your mind gets tricked into thinking that there's actually like a little ball there. <laughs> I've made a, an HTML form that will let you select different checkboxes to turn on uh, LEDs uh, for that animation program that I previously showed you. Um, what this is doing is each checkbox has a certain value and the PHP form end of this, so when you click submit, is then converting the values into an array that Arduino can then use. It's compatible uh, syntactically. Um, and all you have to do is copy and paste the array into Arduino and it will show, then show uh, the animation if you're running the code. So I'll click submit. So here you see it made the animate array. Uh, which is a 4x4x4 four by four by four three-dimensional array. So now I can copy this, go into Arduino, find the previous animate. Oh no, <laughs> it's all over the place. So up in my declarations. So here it is. I just paste it. So this is the new one that I just made. So this is going to make it easier to make animations. I have not yet designed frames, so it's not dynamic yet, but I can make little objects that use persistence of vision. So then I can upload this. And it will then display what I had used for the checkboxes.
So this is just a little cube with the outlines as I had selected. So the bottom layer has a square and the top layer is a square and then the layers in between just have the corners lit up. So it makes a little cube outline. And for future modifications I will make dynamic animations where it's able to uh, change the object over time. So what I'm about to demonstrate is the basis for my snake program uh, that I've been working on. Uh, this program just lets you, allows you to move essentially where the LED is um, across all 64 LEDs. So this was to test the input uh, for the joystick and the push buttons. So if I move the joystick, it exceeds a threshold and then basically pushes the LED that's currently on um, over one. It's not physically doing that, it's actually setting this to low and then the next one to high. Uh, according to which direction you uh, toggle it. So you can move around in the 2D plane. You can also wrap around any of the axes. So if you go off this end, it'll pop up over here, vice versa. Same for Y axis and even the Z axis. I actually couldn't tell which button I was pressing because <laughs> I'm backwards. But yeah, it's really cool. Um, and I hope to make Snake in 3D where you keep getting longer as you eat food, and if you bump into yourself, um, I don't know, I guess you would eat yourself or something, but then it's game over. <laughs> um, and I I really want this to be a platform for anyone who wants to use it, um, can develop their own little games, uh, animations, and whatnot, and I'd like to make this available as a kit on some sort of website. I would have to say that my favorite part of the Blue Stamp experience was uh, having the instructors in the room with you and uh, the ability to have them guide you and uh, really get you towards your goal and completing your project. Uh, without that, I would be, if I was at home, I'd be researching stuff online and I don't feel like I would be getting anywhere. But I decided that I really wanted to enroll in Blue Stamp because of that one-on-one -on -one teacher student experience that it uh, seemed to offer it did. <laughs> um, the favorite part my favorite part about the project that I've been working on is uh, I don't know I really like LEDs they're cool <laughs> um, and they're it's fun to program and I feel like I've learned a lot of programming I had to do a lot with arrays which got very complicated because I was using 3d arrays um, the hardest part about my project Currently, I've been work, working on Snake, and uh, Snake is requiring a lot of attention to detail in the code, and I have to debug it a lot, and it's getting very complicated. <laughs> um, but I hope to debug it and get it working uh, so I can put it on the GitHub and other people can use it. Um, and where I hope to go with this project, um, I really, I think it would be a good idea to make this into a kit, because, uh, I guess I can hold it up. Because the, this proto board, it's basically just a base for my design. But I don't really need this big space. All I need is something about this big that can hold all the resistors and all the anode columns. So if I use Eagle to develop a circuit that I could then manufacture, uh, I think that giving that idea to some website like SparkFun and uh, merchandising it essentially so that I somehow get some of the profit from it. Uh, I think that would be really neat because profit is better than no profit, I don't know. <laughs> um, and yeah, I think that it would be a really interesting kit and I could uh, make a following around this project and I think that it would be really cool to make an instructable and have other people learn how to make this project because I was really interested in LED cubes before I came here and I didn't know how to make it. Um, and I just think that I can pass on my knowledge to others and I can make a little community around this project.